Hello everybody, welcome to JLab TV. I am JLab and this is Football Manager 2017, the Unemployment Challenge. And this time my test subjects, we found out a problem. I'm not in the Champions League despite the fact we qualified for the Champions League last season because we failed the UEFA Champions League financial fair play regulations. Much to my own frustration and annoyance. My predecessor did not do a very good job and now I'm here picking up the pieces after he left to manage Portugal. The fool. But still it's given me an opportunity to change Benfica for the better. They haven't won a title since 2018 so that's good for me and yes. I'm looking to see what we can do. Either way it'd be interesting to see what we can do and I'm going to show you the transfers that have happened so far. The first transfer that was done before I even joined the club was Tomasa Cotietti. Oh god damn it. Cotietti, I think. Yes, he's a backup goalkeeper. He's only played twice for me. That was because of injury to my main goalkeeper. And for the most part, he's been decent. Done the job for me so far. And I could not be happier that he's been here. Good timing for him, really. The next signing I brought in was a loan signing from Manchester United, who I seem to like loaning players from. His name, and it's Andre Eri, or Eria. Either way, he's been good. He's a defensive fullback, but I've been playing as a fullback, attacking fullback. So, yes, I'm happy with how he's done so far. Been decent. He's got five yellow cards, but he needs to do best in the future yeah, to avoid that. He actually was at Sporting Lisbon to begin his career. Now he's back in Portugal. He's, well, been good. And I'm happy that's the case. I enjoyed using him. I will need to get a left back in the future though to make up for the lack of good left backs at this club if I decide to use full backs in the future. The next signing was Charles Mamoni and we brought him from Livorno who are our feeder club and they were going to sell him for £700,000 to another club I thought, okay, this guy's actually a really good player. I want to buy him. So I did. And yeah, he's now here. That Benfica, 16 years of age. He's got a bright future in the game. Bizarro was the next player that I brought in. He was originally at Benfica, originally. Uh, he started his career here. That's why he's a homegrown nation. That's why he's registered as a homegrown nation player. £1.3 million he was bought for. He's now worth £8.5 million. And yeah, we sold him for free initially. I mean, we did get £600,000 for loan deals in the past, but I'm happy with him. Hasn't been the best so far, but for the most part, I think he's been decent and I'm just happy we've got him. He's got a good future for us and a good attack midfielder. The last player that I bought before the end of the summer transfer window was Nelton. £1.3 million again, brought him for, and he's only come on for the bench every time he's played in the league so far but I have been trying to use him in the attacking in the left winger position he hasn't really been getting the position or getting the game time he really wants so he's complained about it so I thought okay I'll play you Rafa Silva the man here is the understudy to is the better player but Rafa Silva hasn't as been as good as he could be this season so I'm dis been disappointed with him actually and the first signing of the January transfer window has been Ivan Michalino and bought for two million pounds for Piers the uh, Paris Saint-Germain and I'm happy with him I mean he saw his career at Braga but then was bought for 275,000 pounds I mean we paid two million pounds for him people may say we, we spent too much on him but I feel he's got a bright future and can grow into a very good player. So hopefully I can get him to become a good player and to become a Portuguese international because that's good. I always want to buy local talents and make them better because it helps everyone. Well, not club I buy them from, but the national team at least anyway. And either way, I'm happy with how it's gone. And fun fact, my former team have appointed a new manager. So if I, my former team... So if I, so my former team have officially appointed Mark Kerr as their full-time manager after he was given the interim role for the last six or so months. 
And he's been decent, actually. He's been really good. I mean, he was my assist under 20s assistant manager at Sterling Albion and Hearts, so he's followed me throughout my entire career, for the most part, after he retired. And he's now got his first full-time job as a manager after he was interim manager at Hearts, and he's been really good. 27 games, 13 wins, 9 draws, 9 defeats. And so far, Hearts are top of the table by 4 points, which is really good, because it gives me the confidence knowing that, despite the fact I left, they're still going to be champions as far as I'm concerned. And that's very good for everyone involved. The question, here, the question now is, can we follow suit and become champions of Portugal? My first game in charge for Benfica was against Gil Vance Gio Cassente, and we didn't have the best of times possession wise, but we still won 3 0. So I wasn't really happy. I felt like we just weren't really good enough on the day, despite the fact we got a 3 0 win. But that's just me being complaining about the whole thing and just not liking how things went. I think I went. I'm going to try and see if I can forget formations. Here we go. Formations. I went for this formation and it didn't really work for me as much as I wanted it to. So. I felt I needed to try and change things up. And considering we lost the next game, despite the fact we were the better team, told me the entire story. Again, I went... F I actually went for this uh, formation this time out. No, sorry, I'm looking at the other team. I went for the same formation as last time, and again, we struggled, so I felt, hang on, we need to change things up. This hasn't gone the way we should be. So I changed the formation, and we got a 0-0 draw against Sports and Lisbon after absolutely dominating against them. Suddenly... With a better team, and we did change the formation that we had two defensive midfielders. And again, I felt we needed to change things up a little bit. With a 2 4 3 1 formation with two defensive midfielders, I feel we decided we need to get central midfielders instead because it wasn't really as well as it could have been. And with Braga being in the next game, we weren't the best again, but we still managed to win 1 0 thanks to Matic. Scoring the only goal, and again, it was the defensive players in the game. And again, I just did not feel like it was our best formation, so I had to change things up a little bit. Even if the, we had to change the um, players up anyway, because the internationals before the game. We managed to win this game 2 0. Um, wasn't our best of game again. I feel like we're struggling, it's just the formations not really suiting my style of play, my demands of the team, I had to change things about, I wasn't really finding the right formation for myself, and it just felt really annoying, despite the fact we won 2-0. And then we faced Santa Clara, who actually took the lead against us, so we went 1-0 down, but then we got 3 goals in 11 minutes, or 12 minutes, and the formation was finally changed to what I normally play. 4-2-3-1 formation. I've stuck with this formation ever since this game. I feel like we've been really good with it. So that's good for me. And we had the um Tecca de Portugal third round match. And we pretty much changed the entire team apart from the goalkeeper. We dominated them and got a 4-0 win with our defender, Yeri Minna, getting a, hat, uh, a brace, which is good. I just need to see what I can do in the future, really. And see how long it would take for us to really get in the groove and with the percentage of possession we had and the amount of shots we had it could have been an even bigger scoreline which tells you a lot. I guess the one disappointment I've had so far in terms of performances was this match against Meritimo. We didn't win and it was the formation I've been using that I felt comfortable with so I was disappointed with this performance which could, because we didn't win they went down to 10 men for the last 11 matches I probably should have tried to just go out full out attack them but I didn't, and we probably felt the price because of that, so need to work in that. But still, uh, Academica in the Tecate de Portugal fourth round match was a good game for us. We won 3 0. Wasn't the most comfortable in terms of possession, but the formation again is working in my favour, so I feel this formation is working. I do have to tweak the um, tactics every so often or just tweak the instructions, but it seems to be going well for me. We've had this game in a de Liga third phase Group C. This group matches. I don't understand why there's groups in these cups anymore. But again, we weren't at our best. We did win 2-1. They scored because of a penalty, and that was the only reason they did score. And yeah, not our best, but we could always be better. 
and they could always be worse. But still, Daniel Silva got a hat trick inside 7 minutes in one of the games recently. We weren't our best again, but I feel at this point the team can't really get any worse um, or can't really get any better for what I have, so I've decided to stick with this formation and it's been going well for me. Good on Daniel Silva. The last Taka de Portugal game of the 2024 kind of the year was against Braga. We won 3 1. It was the first game we've actually considered a goal in open play with for some time. And I felt that we probably got a bit too confident with the fact we had a 3 1, 3 0 lead. And it was a reason why we considered the goal. But still, it's a win. I can't complain. And this is the last game of the 2024 kind of the year for Benfica. And we were down to 10 men inside the first half. Andres Kubas has not really done well for me. I don't know what it is. I don't think I like using him or something. I think he's a good player. He's, well, I say I haven't, he hasn't really done well for me. He's got 6.99 average racing, but compared to his previous four years, that's not really much to talk about. That's been a bit low for his standards. His standards are getting 10 assists or more in the last three seasons. Hasn't really been matched this year. I guess it's because of the formation I'm using that doesn't suit his style, but I feel like he's just not been good enough. But that's just me. Not getting, not really using him the way I think he should, he could be used, and the way I think he wants to be used. But yeah, I just haven't really found the right reason for him. I might let him go actually, even though he's one of my best players. I mean, yeah, he's a defensive midfielder first and foremost, but. I feel he can also play the same position in the midfielder role. And I'm only going to be using midfielders, not defensive midfielders. So maybe I need to let him go over in the future. Who knows? I've also got a problem because of the Champions League issue. i got at least five players wanting to leave for Champions League football. And I had to promise them, yes, we'll get Champions League football. Yes, we'll get Champions League football. Don't worry about it. We'll get Champions League football. And Rafa Silva's the main concern for me because he's only £110,000 a week but his contract ends at the end of the season and with all the teams that are wanting to buy him I might be powerless to keep hold of him. I still want £40 million for him for 31 year old but I think it might be a bit difficult to keep hold of him. With Milan, Napoli, Real Madrid, Roma and Tottenham all wanting him and Sevilla and Valencia also interested this could be a tough ask to keep hold of him. I don't know. It'd be difficult. I would reject all offers for the time being, but I might potentially let him go for the right price if I get it. If I do get it. So far, this is the league table, and we are top of the table at the moment. I was forced to set all. I was forced to set one of my players, but he was leaving anyway, and I will show him in a bit. But we're two points clear. Porto, who have a game in hand in us, I think getting Champions League football is the main priority for us right now. Even though the um, board are not happy with my direct football style. But yeah, I feel we're in a good position either way. Roger Tamba Impinta, or Impinda, wanted to leave. He was going to leave at the end of this contract anyway. I sold him for £7 million? Yeah, £7 million to a championship side. He's now worth £14.5 million. I wasn't playing him. He wanted to leave for Toulouse because they were going to offer him more money. I decided, screw it. I'll send him for the... First price. It was he actually had Millswell after him for eight point five million, but he ended up going to Sunderland, um the next transfer window, which is disappointing, but I can't complain. I got rid of him and got rid of his rages, which is good. Talking about players and transfers, I got this guy on a free transfer at the beginning of the next season. And he's good. Really good for a second midfielder. And it gives him more strength in that position, so that's really nice as well. And hopefully we can get more players in our position as well. And use him better than you better have, because I haven't used him at all. What is wrong with them? But yeah, free transfer for this guy. He's had 10 clubs apparently already. But with all the loan moves he's had, it's no surprise he's had so many clubs. Either way, I can't complain. It's good to have in the future. But anyway, I'm actually going to end this video here. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you like and share this video and that you subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out a lot. I'm thinking of turning this series into a live series where I have face cam. But until next time, goodbye and well, good night.